minus 30 seconds. T minus 20 seconds. Trap Talk Reptile Network, coolest reptile network in the world. Welcome to New Breed on the Block every Monday right here on Trap Talk Reptile Network, episode 468. I'm your boy, MJ. Today we got ZDC Reptiles in the building. But what's good, everyone? I hope everyone had a wonderful weekend out there. Um, I'm your boy, MJ. If this is your first time tapping in and you're into keeping reptiles, you want to learn more about reptiles, smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, select all. You'll be on top of every single podcast I drop here on this network man shout out to all the love and support if you listen to this podcast on all the major audio platforms first and foremost thank you uh but don't don't forget to rate review and subscribe um so apple podcast spotify buzzsprout wherever man thank you for all the love and support shout out to the early birds get to you guys in a minute man shout out to us Ark for raising sixty thousand dollars at the us Ark auction at narbc tinley shout out to you if you contributed to that if you've even attended i really wish i would have been there and shout out to again amazing stuff to hear that you guys hit 60k um i actually heard it was more than more like 80k rumor rumor has it but they ended up spreading some of that money out to some people who really need it but that's what this is all about that's why i love the reptile community this kind of stuff that i hear that us arc does like the donations just makes my heart warm but phil goss thank you so much for everything you do shout out to the entire us arc association the team behind us arc us arc florida of course and shout out to you if you support us arc tonight's episode is brought to you by mana clothing company uh please head over to mana clothing uh dot com okay and check out what they have available as far as uh you know apparel goes man i'm very excited to have uh this clothing brand be a part of trap talk Really awesome stuff, a part of what I have rocking almost on a daily basis, man. Sick ass shorts, sick ass, sick ass t shirts. Uh, you could type in Trap Fam to get 15% off your entire order. And again, that's ManaClothingCompany.com. And again, shout out to the Manaw Clothing Company family out there. Super stoked to be a part of that again. And also, today's episode is brought to you by the Coco Dude, aka the Chipper, number one substrate in the game. I'm telling you right now, I'm converting. That's right, you're hearing it first right now that i am converting everything to the chipper i'm about to ditch all paper at this point crazy to say i've been using paper for so long but it's just too much work i'm over it i'm over it so gonna be uh organizing what i gotta do to get more of the chippers cocoa over here uh aka cocoa to go that's that's my go-to when it comes to using this substrate i love it but uh, yeah no more paper say goodbye to the paper and shout out to you if you use uh, Coco dude, uh, next time you place your order, it's very crucial that you put in trap fam 24 and you get 24% off the entire year. Um, and yes, super excited to be working with the chipper telling you right now. I'm a huge fan, huge fan. Love it. So, um, hoping to just create less work for myself because my overhead's getting pretty tight right now. I'm not gonna lie. Last but not least, shout to conduit constrictors. All right. Also some hitters that were just at Tinley. Okay. If you were able to stop by conduit constrictors, Conduit Constrictors table, make sure you drop a comment, let me know. But also, first and foremost, make sure you follow them on Instagram, um, and that's Conduit Constrictors. You can find the link to their Instagram in the description below. Click on it, and I'll go give them a follow and go see what they have going on. Uh, major heat in the ball python game, that's for sure. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, my boy, Big E, Top G, Bill Arena Reptiles, it's here. Trap Talk Network soldier in the house. What's good, bro? What's up? You're like, you're a captain. Yeah, what's up, man? How you doing? Chill. Yeah? Either you're outgrowing your shirt or that's like a, a medium or something. that You're looking kind of like, you're making me small. You're making me look small right now, bro. Nah, it's a large. <laughs> How you I living, should probably, I should probably start getting extra large, but, you know, I'm, nah, I'm going to probably good. lose six pounds here soon, so <laughs> whatever. That little buffer weight. You look great, bro. How's your weekend? How's everything? How are the animals? How's, how's your pairings going, man? What's going on? Everything looking great? Everything's amazing, bro. I'm loving life right now. 
uh, had the weekend off, went to my son's, uh, you know, St. Patty's parade, you know, for Dude, that was very, I mean, I can already tell you're proud, but Holy shit. You sent me pics of your boy in that parade and I can only imagine the feelings you had, you know, yeah. I, I mean, yeah, me as a father, I would, I would just be so proud, you know, 20 years old, bro. He's already a firefighter. It's insane. Yeah. Kid yeah. didn't mess around. Usually like, I mean, like I did, I, kids fuck off their twenties, you know, or they just do a lot of stuff they shouldn't be doing. doesn't seem like he's on that time and he didn't play, man. Went right okay. into it. Respect. Okay. What I'll say is that, you know, you know, he's a young man and yeah. uh, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't mess around. And, and our guest, another young man that ain't playing dude yeah and you know it's funny not only <laughs> i i know this guy's name because you almost butcher it every time you try saying it you have to like slow yourself down and you go z d c reptiles <laughs> don't feel bad because i do the same thing <laughs> no that's what i'm talking about. i'm not i don't have a problem saying it. i'm, I'm talking about you <laughs> yeah no, I'm, you know I, I do it too no know? but listen uh dude young hitter um you didn't even know this kid was a kid i mean i mean he's under 21 i'm gonna say he's a kid even though he doesn't carry himself as a kid but fuck he looks young he is young you had no clue right nope i i bought two animals from him this year this last year and i was looking for the best animals i could find for what i was looking for and my price point and uh you know he had amazing reviews nice animals so i hit him up bro i feel like i'm talking to a 30 year old yeah, up, I had no idea. So, you know, and uh, say what you want, man. But I look at reviews as like putting in work. You know, if you got okay. if you got people who are continuously giving you props on something you're selling them, that means you're doing it right. And and it doesn't come easy. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. and for him to be 19 and have more reviews than like more 30 plus year olds in the game, it's fucking crazy. <laughs> bro. Listen, I, I, I in the in the chats today, I said, how is this guy? <laughs> beating most of you know killing most of the ball fights on industry out there. uh i'll yeah. tell you 107 reviews and listen i don't care what anybody says yeah what i love about morph market is that you can't fake that shit no i mean and there's no way and regardless if people choose to do five star that's on them but i mean comments are the reviews are everything no matter what yeah. people look at it i don't know. know if most people know this out there but a customer let's say you have a, a customer that always comes back to you, comes comes back to you right yeah that customer can only give you a review once every 15 months i think oh really it okay doesn't count. I, I, I didn't even know you could get i thought once they gave you a review it it's over i thought even though i didn't even know they no it stacks right but That's it cool. doesn't count towards the total hmm. so again you can't fake that so yeah well, listen, there's mad people in the early bird chats. I want to show love to people in the chats today. I'm in a good mood, so let's do it. I know they're excited to hear tonight's guest as well. I'm looking to get inspired. Um, and, yeah, shout out to the homie Heath and Hatchery, who's cashing in his new breeder on the block prize on the raffle. Um, I respectfully asked him, hey, Brian, you've already been on. Do you want to put give it to somebody and who you think deserves a spot or do you want to come back for round two he's like i'll take my round two thank you very much i'm <laughs> like okay that's what i like to hear so we got brian hatchery uh we got brian from heath and hatchery coming back uh round two new breed on the block which a lot, nobody gets like this is cool so looking forward to it uh shout out to the homie brian from heath and hatchery trap talk patreon member of unit family all day every day appreciate you dog all city serpents in the building the homie james b trap talk patreon member all day every day pj's creation the homie eric in the building Trap Talk Patreon member all day, every day. Magic City Pythons, JC, but ye unit family all day, every day. Alex M in the fam in the building, B unit family all day, every day. Celtic Reptiles in the building. Trap Talk Patreon member all day, every day. Heartland Reptiles in the building, the homie Jordan. Trap Talk Patreon member all day, every day. Man Freddy, more Valley Reptiles. B unit. Trap Talk Patreon member all day, every day. Eric's more factory in the building. B unit family all day, every day. Greg Lovato. What's up, Greg? Thanks for tapping in. Trap Talk Patreon member all day every day. More Kings in the building than we Cody. Trap Talk Patreon member all day every day. Matt Craft or Croft. Man, you got me. I thought that was Craft, but I like Croft better. I'm not going to lie. That shit's hard. But what's good, Matt? Thanks for tapping in. Trap Talk Patreon member all day every day. The homie Shane. It's my guy right here. Our guy. The homie Shane. Above all scales. Trap Talk Patreon member of the unit family all day every day. JQ. Big dog JQ OG triple OG in the building. What is good? V Unit family all day every day. Keys Constrictor. What's good? Keys. Thanks for tapping in, homie. Uh, Meteor 
Serpents in the building. Oh, by the way, V Unit family all day, every day. Meteoric Serpents in the building. V Unit family. Trap Talk Patreon member all day, every day. And corruption. <laughs> Kaluber corruption. My mind, my, my just, you know, I get on a roll sometimes and then just, I, I don't know what happens, but. He's been corrupting everybody. He's, it's so corrupt, I can't even say it. But it's <laughs> Kaluber corruption on Meteoric Serpents YouTube channel. Peep it out. Big things coming from the homie. Banana Fields in the building. What's up, homegirl? Banana. I called her Banana. <laughs> it almost looks like Banana, though, right? If you look at it real quick. Okay. So I'm not wrong. I'm not, I'm not too far off. Banna. Ba banana. Dude, what is that? How, how, what do you, how do you think? How do you think you say that? Banna Fields. Banna. Okay. Uh, <laughs> banna. What's up? What's good, Banna? That's a sick name. I'm sorry. I don't know why I can't pronounce that right. Dwight, the Pied Man in the building. What's up, Dwight? Thanks for tapping in. JNS and the Exotics in the building. What's up, James Perry? Uh, Aaron in the building. What is up? Batter up balls. Greg in the building. What is up, Greg? Push Reptiles. What is good, Push? Big Mike, 1776 Exotics. Trap Talk, Patreon member all day, every day. And guys, if you have an important question or a topic or whatever you think that could relate to what we're talking about tonight, show some love in the Super Chats. Do not be shy with the super chats. First priority, first and foremost, man. If you got an important question, drop a super chat. I'm throwing it on the screen. That's a fact. By the way, all super chats donated to US Arc. Every episode, every segment. That's what we do. And I'm ready to go. You ready to bring ZDC on or what? No. Oh. All right. It's game time. It's time to get you guys put on game from some of the youngest doing it in the ball python game. ZDC Reptiles coming at you. 468 episodes coming so far. More to come. But let's do this. New breed on the block. Oh, yeah. Get your mind right. Stay hydrated. Let's go. Cheers. Good. You ready for do, do more in the future? Trap yes. Talk podcasts? Yes. Man. Only, only Trap Talk. Exclusive. Yes. Trap Exclusive. Oh. So stop calling us. From the spot, get the club to pop. When I come up with the Live episode 468 ZDC Reptiles. The homie Zane. What's up, Zane? How are you? See, I told you, Milo, this is him. It this is uh -oh. him, bro. Listen, I sent this guy the thumbnail and he's like, Bro, take this down. You got it wrong. I'm like, What? That's not him. I'm like, dude, this he just sent me that pic. He's like, hold on. And he went to go what go to confirm whatever. And he's like, Bro, I had no idea he was this young. Um is this a thing, Zane? Are you just you, you, are you purposely just staying low key and not letting people know your age, or what's going on, man? What? How come not too many people know? And obviously, we know you're probably mature for your age, but how come not that many people know your age, man? What's going on? It's not like on purpose, but right. you know, like I just don't post that much. I don't post that much of myself. I kind of just let the snakes talk. Damn. That's what I'm saying. When you do that, people aren't going to ask too many questions. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> you're just keeping it strictly snake business, and that's. Why we're all here too, so respect. I like you already. <laughs> and this is his first podcast, everybody. Oh, I'll take that all day, every day. Listen, I have to ask you. I should have asked you. I have a pretty bad mouth sometimes. Are your parents watching? And and if they are watching, are they are they preferred not cussing? Like, what, what, I'm just curious. Well, you're, you're all good. I, okay. you're I just sometimes I got. I just want to respect folks out there. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. I have a buddy, Mark Hager, whose mom, whose mom, like 
begged me not to cuss on the next time I brought her son on and I failed miserably still. So I'm just, at least I try, you know what I'm saying? Um, but Zane, dude, I can't wait to get to know you better, man. What is good? Um, what part of the country are you in? Uh, I'm in Maryland. So I'm like 30 minutes north of Baltimore. What is it about Maryland? So many crazy, amazing OG and just legendary keepers out of Maryland. Um, who groomed you, man? Like, is this, is this something you learned on your own coming up, um, you know, in your teenage years or you you got family in reptiles? Let's get to that. So I, I started breeding ball pythons when I was like 12. So I've been doing it for a long time. I've had them for probably since I was like eight or nine. My uncle used to breed snakes. He had like reticulated pythons, boas, and I grew up around them. Like I was outside catching them and whatnot. Okay. And then through like YouTube, Brian Barczyk, stuff like that is how I kind of got into being like, okay, I want to do this. Yeah. Parents cool about it, huh? Mm -hmm. Dang. And so it was your uncle then that was like the kicker. That was like the one in your family who you basically implanted all these like obsession seeds about the reptiles basically. It's yeah. Cause it's how no. I got an idea that like it was being done, you know? Yep. We're going to say something. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, no. Go oh. ahead. And, and honestly, that's kind of, you know, because this isn't a normal thing, even though it is becoming a little bit more like, wow, a lot of people keep reptiles. But let's even think about 10 years ago. This wasn't like, you know, there's not too many people you talk to who keep reptiles, especially to this level. It's like a it's even, you know, like I said, it's grown a lot, but it's still a small world in a sense. Like we're not that huge compared to like the dog world or something. Right. Um, mm -hmm. But we all we all need that implant. We all need something that kind of gives us even ideas mine was my my cousin Lloydie, who was kind of out there but he had a freaking property full of like wild caught like just wild shit from all over the world africa and that shit just blew me away so and he lived back east but i mean you know you being 12 years old um was did your uncle like who like was it all youtube information putting you on as far as teaching you how to breed ball pythons like could you really give all the credit to stuff you learn on content on social media or or who helped you so by the time that I started doing it, he wasn't doing it anymore. Got it. Okay. He wasn't doing it for that. Long, but like, I used to like watch the Brian Barczyk videos on like how to do it and take notes. And then um, if you guys know about the Marcus Jane, like pictorial thing, that helped a lot. Yeah. I heard, I, 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 go ahead. I send that to every single customer that asked me for help. Uh, shout out to uh, Marcus Jane. Uh, amazing uh, you know i've told mj before they're they're like one of the people that inspired me out there big time yeah. so anytime i have mark magic on the show like i get not nervous but i'm like man this guy has done so much like and i'm talking about like legacies like he's already left so many crazy le crazy legacies for us in this hobby and he's still here doing it you know and um you know and he doesn't have to like he you know he likes to travel he's already talking about slowly kind of getting there and you know god bless him he deserves it but wow what a guy man you want to talk about one of the best we have period mark mandic for sure yeah. marcus jane 100 percent, definitely so i gotta ask you um i don't know too much respectfully i don't know too much about what it is about your projects that even keep you relevant okay um so let's kind of talk about that what is it that you have working with right now um, and maybe kind of, kind of tell us some of the foundation stuff, like stuff that you've been sitting on and vested in for a while. Um, I like the puzzle stuff a lot. I think the puzzle stuff is it's growing pretty quickly. It sells pretty well. It seems like it's what the people want. Um, I've noticed that Sunset is getting pretty big, like as of recent. Uh, it's really starting to pick up a lot of DG Clown stuff, um, Clown Pied stuff the sorts i have some monarch clown stuff that i'm working on right yeah one of the things that i made this year was an orange dream hypo double head sunset puzzle damn yeah that's crazy <laughs> that's, wow. that, that's amazing okay. so first thing that's standing out in my head is like okay what was this kid doing even in 14 years old, 15 years old to get money to invest in projects like this. Let's be real. Like this is some heavy hitting shit. You know what I'm saying? Even to start at head, you're still putting in a lot of money. So where did you get the capital for a lot of this stuff? Was it your parents helping you out? Cause they saw you doing good with it. Or did you go mow some lawns? Like where, where were we gathering some funds for this shit? So when it started, would I started like really cheap. Like I think the first snakes that I had were like a pastel champagne, 
a super pastel, like a spinner male. And then like once I started to like actually say like talk to my parents, like, yeah, I want to try and breed them sort of thing. Uh, my dad, he would buy me snakes for like my birthday or Christmas. What or a guy. Whatever. So it like it wasn't that much, but it was like definitely like enough to get me kick started. And then like once I started breeding them, it was like so he got me like a pied and then like a banana poshet pied. Stuff like that, and then so we're, we're talking. We're talking about like ten years ago, or, or more than ten years ago. About I would say, yeah, about like eleven years ago. No, this would be twenty sixteen. Okay, twenty sixteen. Okay, like around that's when I. So it's probably like twenty fifteen is when I started to buy stuff, and then twenty sixteen was when I started getting clutches. Okay, so that's that was a tricky time, right? Because if you were really looking at buying stuff seriously, then you could easily gotten into the whole like stack code on still. Right. Because that was like the end of the era towards the end of the era where like stack all the code arms, you know, and then, and then and people I, started seeing the recessives. Right. I definitely did. I, I had like all sorts of stuff that you probably wouldn't want. Now I had right. like when I first started breeding, I had like five males and four females. <laughs> Everyone does that, you know? Yeah. So how'd you pivot? Like, what'd you do? Like, what, how did you move around that? Um, I mean, I probably I can't really remember now. I probably sold a mail or two. And then just like once I started to get eggs, like I noticed that it was pretty easy to sell like from the get go. Mm. Uh, at that time, Morph Market didn't have reviews, which I think might have helped me because I didn't have any, like obviously. Right. So I think like I wouldn't get like top dollar. I would wholesale some stuff too. But eventually, like if you sell like four or five snakes for 200 bucks and you put it all back in, like, you can, you can grow it relatively quickly. It adds, it adds up quick. Mm -hmm. And yeah. all, all you need is to like, just get lucky a couple of times. And then if you keep reinvesting, reinvesting, and like, that's pretty much what I've done, like even till now. So what I'm getting from what you're saying is in these, uh, what, seven years, it seems like you've already gone through every stage of being a ball Python breeder <laughs> pretty much. Because yeah. I, man, I went through that wholesale stage and and that trading stage and and yeah. you know building as well. So I'm I'm getting it that you've you've gone pretty fast in these seven years. Mm -hmm. Very impressed. Yeah. Thank you. And, and, and obviously, like the one thing I like is you didn't come in this with a shit ton of money. Like you think about the story of kids who come in with loaded like pockets, right? And those usually those kind of young breeders don't last unfortunately because they get way in ahead of themselves and they don't make right purchase decisions they because mind you no one's really helping them out like it's a especially back then it was, it was cutthroat you know you people knew you had money oh man social media wasn't really around as much as it was then so there wasn't much of like there's no fbi freaking facebook pages or anything like that um so what's smart about you is like you literally started from the ground up like you you got stuff that was you know obviously an investment for you at the time but then you just kept stack. You just kept stacking from there, and that's why you could come in at any level, and just it just it's all about how you work and how you really move from there. Um, so I'm and I'm curious, like your first year breeding was what year? 2016, or I started in 2015. I got eggs in 2016. How many how many uh, clutches did you have that year? Three. Okay, um, and obviously that's quite the feeling, right? You're like, holy shit, I did it, right? Uh, but what happened that next year? Like, how many clutches? So the next year, I got six. Okay. And then the year after that, I got zero. Ooh. And I was, must have been a kick in the balls. What happened? Yeah, let's let's talk about why you got zero. I don't really know, like, what I did wrong. But, like, from that point, I was just like, okay, I guess I just got to go again. And, like, I did pretty much the same thing. I mean, I'm, I'm maybe it wasn't feeding enough. Mm. So I didn't get, like, the females, like, big enough to go for the year after. Right. And they all took off. Mm. But the maybe i changed temps the year after i got it pretty dialed in yeah if you change something on them if you feed them a little less like i i kind of went through that this last year with a change in weather pattern kind of i kept the room a little warmer i might have i might have not fed exactly the same um i was on the road a lot i was doing a lot of different things and i went through for the first time in my whole breeding career i actually produced less less than the previous year yeah never. i've never done that before yeah mm -hmm. and, and you know and, and it could go either it could go either way right because one of the 
rookie mistakes I made after having a successful breeding season is I hit my females way too hard, way too fast um, after they laid a clutch because I thought, oh, I need to get them to bounce back, right? But, you know, if you kind of look at it, not all ball pythons look that shitty after they lay a clutch. Like, some do, but some look like, wow, like, you look like you're pretty good. So, mm -hmm. you talk about bouncing them back, but bouncing them back, like, moderately, right? And so, there's definitely chances of you getting that snake overly fed and it's overweight and it's just not going to breed for you. Or you just don't feed it enough. But I got to tell you, man, it's all about feeding it at the right time, first and foremost. Like, I mean, you want... Here's the thing. This is my theory, right? Not my theory, but this is like how I think it it works. I mean, you want the snake to eat as soon as possible after it lay a clutch just to know that it's back in the rhythm of eating. But really the whole focus of hitting that snake hard doesn't happen until the follicle building happens. That's like the only time it's important to you fucking hit them food when you need to hit them. And, and if you don't, then you're going to miss your window. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And then I'm noticing this year that some of them, even if they eat like, gangbusters some of them are just gonna skip on you mm -hmm. you can't do nothing about that sometimes yeah yeah and I, I dealt with that and i'm doing that with every year now because now you know i like you zane i started very slow i had one clutch when i was just trying to see if i could get one the next year was seven the next year was 13 and then the year after that was like 20 20 something right which was last year or something um and as you get more clutches under your belt you're starting you're starting to see that a lot of females you know, you're not going to go like a hundred percent success rate. Like the more you have going in race ro uh, rotation, the more you're going to find females who are going to, you know, just reabsorb or just not even fucking go period, you know, not a lot, but like it happens. Um, and sometimes it's the one you don't want it to happen to. <laughs> Normally is. Yeah. Um, but you know, let's kind of talk about any kind of learning curves, maybe right off the bat or like, did you have any struggles figuring shit out? Like, maybe having clutches that didn't look too good at first or, or did you feel like nothing was that none of that really was an issue for you right off the bat? Um, I had one female who I did, who I paired three times and got eggs from her three times, but she slugged out every time, mm -hmm. which like, and I was like, is this temps? Like, am I cooking them? But n like none of the other ones like ever did anything like that. So I ended up like selling that girl, like as a pet, but, um, Apart from that, like, on the breeding side, not really. Um, like, obviously, you have the problems where you have stuff that you really want to go and it just won't. You have, like, girls that take forever to get to size. And then when you're actually trying to breed them, they still aren't into it. Um, yeah. All right, so I have a question. Go ahead. I have to ask this because, you know, I have my kids and, and I have my way of doing things with them. Um, <laughs> how... How were you able to do all your schoolwork, you know, get them amazing grades, and on top of that, master the ball python industry to where you get 107 reviews, and you have more reviews than a lot of people out there. You're probably in maybe the top 30, top 40 nationwide, I'd say. Someone could look that up for me on Morph Market. So wait, Bro, you, gra you, wait, you, gra you graduated high school last year or the year before? 2022. 2022. So I just turned 20 the other day. I, I got to give oh, you Matt props now. again. Yeah. Bro, Matt props because there's people out there that fail and blame everything on, on all types of shit, right? Yeah. Oh, oh I can't sure. do this. I can't do that. My God, dude, you freaking graduated high school. I bet your GPA was amazing, right? It was and you decent. mastered the industry you love. Tell me about that. <laughs> so I think like during school, I, like even now, like I think like the most amount of snakes that I ever had at one time was like during the hatching season, maybe like 120, 130. So it's like it's a fair, fairly reasonable number to like like even last year I, I did, I think, 18 clutches. So it's not huge, but I'm just trying to go for, like, really, really, really top-notch stuff. Um, so that definitely helps. Like, not having too much of a load, like, definitely, like, makes it easy. It's probably 10, 15 hours a week. I, like, do water changes two or three times a week, clean, like, almost every day. But it, it doesn't take too much time. Um, my grades were good. I played sports. Uh, and then I actually – I'm not in school now, so I'm working full-time. And then I have the snakes as well. Wait, so you have a job 
and the, and it's not the snakes as far as full time. What's your job, buddy? So when I graduated, I decided I was going to be a real estate agent. So I, I got my oh. license. Dude, that's boss. What? But holy shit! Uh, I found out that it wasn't for me. I did it for okay. like, eight years and I was like, "This isn't my thing." So now, I mean, yeah, it's it's. Go goes that? No, go ahead. No, I mean, like, it's yeah, definitely not easy. But I mean, still, like, just even get your license at that age is nuts. Holy shit! <laughs> but now, now I'm in construction. We, my family has like a small construction business, with, like four or five people. Nice working for them. Yeah. Okay, so are you like learning the ropes? Like, are you starting from like you know basically like a journeyman all the way up to like floorman and all the way up to just from there? You're just you're trying to learn the in and out of the construction business now. Yeah. Oh, that's good. I mean, yeah. that that's good business right there, bro. Are you sure. gonna be a general contractor overall? Or? Uh like I'm a little undecided on what my plans you are. Will. I think you will. I think this. I call me call me crazy, but the way I kind of predict things with you, I think you're gonna fucking kill it in the construction construction industry. You will become a GC for sure, a hundred percent. I you just ha I, I just feel it. I I don't know. I mean, obviously you don't know because you you're not you haven't really have that shit under your belt, but. Look at Marshall Mendez. I mean, Marshall Mendez, he's in the construction uh, industry and he won't quit his job because it's just too awesome. Like he's not awesome, but he makes so much money where it makes no sense for him to let that go just to breed snakes. Even though he knows he can do it easily, he just, why would he, you know? So I do know, man, you stick, stick that out and I think you're going to be in a good place. And you never know. I mean, having a real estate license, man, you could also renew your license whenever and you could go back to that venture anytime you want. Like that's like, still awesome to have you know what i'm saying yeah that so was kind of hard well, go ahead were you gonna say zane i was just saying that's what i was thinking as well like yeah I, like there's always going to be like a good time to when you can get in like work it a little bit and it's like like you said just something if you have a friend who wants to do something like it's a good way to make some extra cash yeah i was what i, was, what I could say what i could say so far i think you could do whatever the hell you want for sure i mean yeah, yeah. Like, literally you're at that age you can do whatever you want and then yeah. switch up later if you wanted to and go do that i mean you, you have so much you you just have so much ahead of you it's great like it's, it's 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 awesome but also at the end of the day like you're still doing some big boy shit and you know as i as well as i know it's easy to fall off being relevant in the ball python game if you don't fucking have your shit tight right so um what are you doing this year to kind of set yourself up for success for the following years. Like, and what I mean by that, what are some of the, some of the big projects you have like looking to hold back? Um, let's, let's get into that. Okay. Um, just some off the top of my head, I'm doing a breeder loan. So I have a, uh, pastel lesser double head monarch clown going to a monarch het clown. Nice. Um, so she yeah. has like eight eggs in her uh, on the ultrasound. So we'll see. Do you have the you have the you have the female or does the other person have the female? I have the female. Nice. Um, breeder loans. How do you feel about those, man? Like, is this a good buddy of yours? Are you guys like homie homies, or are you just kind of like met on the internet, or what's going on? Yeah, I've I've known him for a little while. It's a uh, Sebastian from Showcase. Sebastian. Oh, that guy's solid as hell. That guy's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So this is the first one I've ever done, and I, I bought the snake from them, and I was like, "Do you think we could do a loan?" And they were like, "Sure." Cause I didn't have a mail for it, but I really wanted to be in the project. Cause I think it's neat. Um, Closed mouths don't get fed. That's, you know, sometimes you'd be surprised how many big dogs would be like, Hey, I'm down. You know, like if you got the female, you know, they might have overstock and, and be able to kick you down something and do that. Yeah. Like that's, but you got to ask those questions. And I gotta, I gotta tell you, I mean, even me being a lot older than you, I, it's kind of a hard thing to ask sometimes. Cause you don't, you know, you don't think, fuck like somebody's gonna want to collab with you but you know that's why you got to build relationships and that's why you got to become in in with certain people so props props to you yeah but it's it's a nice snake too like i think like you know you can't really go wrong you know at shots no. of clowns like nobody's gonna say no you know yeah i mean i'm like i said i i can't really can't really talk too much because i don't want to fanboy so much on monarch because i don't have monarch but i i think monarch is just gonna fucking clean house. I'm not gonna lie. I, I, have, I have a good feeling. Uh, yeah. We'll yeah. What do you What do you think? What do you feel about Ultra Male Monarch? Do you feel like they've always been completely different to you, or did you like ever see them maybe being the same at some point um, coming up in the game? I think they've always been different, but uh, like there, there obviously there are similarities. Like they are similar. Right. But I, 
if you're, if you're going, it's kind of a different color palette, you know, like the Ultramel's like the more orange. And then, I mean, I guess Monarch is kind of the same if you put it with the right stuff, but yeah. Dark monarchs is so dark, like you know. But sometimes when you just have a monarch and an ultra male just solo in itself, and like they're adults, it could get difficult to be like, well, what the fuck, you know. But really, babies combinations is how you really know. And once you have the right combinations in either or, that's when it's like, okay, hello, there's no argument now. Yeah. What, what I can tell you guys is that Jacob posted a single gene female. Yeah, dude. Uh, that, let me tell you something, bro. That animal makes me want to buy a monarch tomorrow. I've always loved Jacob's fucking monarchs. Uh, I, I, I had thing. to give him props, bro, and I'm giving him props live here because oh animal, yeah, look at that thing. Oh my the god, animals and the purples. I mean, if you call them purples, are fucking incredible. Yeah, shout out to Civil Serpents, my boy Jacob, doing big things, and look he's at this been thing. he's been vested in the monarch game for a while, and I didn't even know he posted this. This is shit. That just, that makes me want to buy a monarch tomorrow. Just a single monarch. That's it. It's yeah. amazing. Beautiful. I'm sorry, but Ultramel can't hold the fucking camera. Well, I love Ultramel too. Okay. I, I mean, okay, but, Just saying, but that's dope. I love it. I, I'd love to do something different it's with it. Kind of like, okay, like everyone gets a, a, a like a trophy type. But no, I, honestly, I'm I'm being real right now. Yeah. Ultramel cannot carry any weight to this right here. I'm sorry. I it's too for me personally. If you I like dark stuff, remember MG likes dark stuff. So for me, dude, this shit. This makes me want to get into it for sure. I can't. I'm super broke right now. But I'm just saying, Monarch, get on it if you don't. If you're on that fence where I'm like, hmm, should I do Monarch or Ultramel? Dude, go Monarch. And then Tommy Tommy posted uh, a low white um, Monarch pie that, sh that someone hit. That shit was dope as fuck, too. I don't want Monarch in pie, though, man. I mean, I think no, that uh, Well, I'm just saying, you know, because Monarch pies, for the most part, the first ones that were hit didn't look that good. But, but this with, one, the the one that was posted this week, looked really good. And like like I said, nothing against Pied. I do like Pied. I've been very clear about how I like Pied. But when it comes to the stuff you've already seen so far in Clown, why would you want to take away those markings and just replace it with something white? I'm good. I want to see that whole snake look like that. You know what I'm saying? So that's the way I look at like certain projects. Um, but mind you, too, we don't have we haven't seen enough of it too. So there could be something nuts. To come out with monarch and pie which i'm sure there will be that's the beauty about this right that's why I like i tell people like to chill when i always go hard about something but at the end of the day everything's capable of being number one for sure like every genetic in the ball python game could come can combinate with something that will just take it to the top and that's the truth you just don't know what it is yet it's always you know that next one what, what next one what's that gonna be but man i feel good about monarch i keep seeing it and i'm just like holy shit um so yeah monarch huh so other than that do you have like how heavy is your monarch collection right now like do you have a lot of it or is it just snake i have for monarch so what that's the only snake i have for monarch that's, okay that's okay more but you know times are a little bit tough <laughs> <laughs> um so last year you produced how many clutches i'm sorry 18 fuck okay cool 18 clutches um and how did those how did finding homes for the snakes you didn't want go? Um, I had a guy who was in Texas, and he wholes like he does wholesale, but he brings them to Mexico. Oh so shit! I probably sent like thirty snakes to him last year, and then the rest of them were on morph market. Damn, man, Mexico! I, I got two of those, by the way. Yep. What no, you caught? Like, you caught some snakes off BDC? Yeah, man, I fucking love them. I got a. I got a puzzle head hypo female I'm in love with and a cypress head sunset pos head hypo female. Love it. Damn. And Did then you I'll I'm sorry? Did you shed test her yet? I haven't. I haven't yet, bro. I'm sl I got like 10 sheds I need to send out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't wait. That's going to be a big day when you get yeah, those she's results. incredible, bro. Thank yeah. you. I love those two. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So 18 clutches last year. If everything goes your way this year, how many clutches? Probably somewhere around the same. I'm given uh, a couple of females the year off. I had a bunch, like maybe like four or five that I like wasn't really that into. Like it's nothing that like I really need to make. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, I ha and I'm kind of low on males too. So for those, like I'm just giving them the year off and that way I don't tire out my males. So, I mean, how do you like to, 
like stretch it out for a male? Like, are you somebody who just tries to keep it one and one, or do you like to do like one and two? Like how, how do you like to work your males in the, in the breeding season? I normally do uh one to one, but right. if, if a male's like, obviously like not working, then I'll throw in another one. Like I have a backup for all of them. Yeah, man. I mean, Emilio and I've been saying it for a while. I and mean, you can't not sleep on having backup males and having just males available. And I'm not talking about like a male of normal male. No, you got to have a fucking a relevant male. And sometimes when you like, you know, here, let's think about the ball Python game, right? Or almost anything like you drop mad bills on something and you're posting pictures and you're like thinking, wow, this is a powerhouse. Wow. This is going to do this. This is going to do that. Is it? We don't know. Like it could just be like, I don't have a dick and it don't work. Or it could just be like, I'm not eating and I'm not going to breed for you. Like there's so many things up against the odds of this snake, not even doing anything for you. You know what I'm saying? Or, or, or he doesn't like girls. Let's he's say a he, he's a he, he, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I, I've had three of those throughout my career. They didn't touch a single girl. No they way. Right ever? Double. Ever? Ever. What'd you do with them? <laughs> Sold as pets. And then one of them, 13 girls. Damn. He only hit one. Damn, it'd be Bro, like that. that shit hurt. Man. That shit know. hurt. So I will <laughs> tell all of you, Zane just said it. We're all light on males. Buy males, bro. Don't be cheap. I mean... In some, you know, a lot of us are skimpy on the males, bro. We don't have extra males. Well, it's Those like it's, are, more, it's it's more like they're they're willing to risk it. Is that and, and, and I don't think it's a like, big I, risk. It's a yeah, huge it's a risk. risk. Yeah, you know, and, 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 and those days are over for me. I'm gonna keep extra males, man. It's all I have about, a pairing. Right. I have a pairing where I had to go to a third male. Cool. I mean, if you if you think of the reality of things, like if the, the, the guys who are really consistently posting pictures of next level projects like double triple recessive visual combos are people who have a lot of chances at it and what i mean by that they have a bunch of females going to a bunch of males and so yeah some don't work out but some do but it's all about the numbers you gotta have fucking numbers and i think a lot of people underestimate how many fucking females are going for this one project that they're trying to hit it's a lot you know it's it's not just a one-on-one -on -one thing for the most part you know, and I know this firsthand, so crazy. Um, so double, triple recessive um, visual stuff is like, when do you plan on hitting stuff like that? You feel like are going to be the stuff you want to be hitting visually at some point. So last year I hit some double recessives. I got um, an orange stream, yellow belly clown pied, a uh, super orange stream, yellow belly fire clown pied. Oh, nice. That were both girls. Um, this year I should have some, uh, pastel NG DG clowns that are pos have G stripe. So that should be nice. And leopard in there too. Um, hopefully I have this really, this girl is a proven breeder, super pastel and she fire spot nose clown head DG. Yeah. 3,500 grams. But Say that I, again. Super pastel. What? And she fire spot nose clown at DG. Nice. And she's like thirty five hundred grams. And I tried to pair her last year, and she wouldn't go. And it doesn't look like she's building this year. I would have. I would have cringed if after you said super pastel, you said monsoon or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. That's fired. No, I'm just saying, like, because it's true. Like, I get it. Like, people have to work from somewhere, but like, super pastel into a recessive where you know that just doesn't look good. It's like, man, you got to work a few years of making snakes that you don't like to see, but you'll get there eventually, right? But that's not the case, obviously, because DG clown and pastel combos are fucking hot. Like, let's they pastel and DG clown shit look great together. So mm -hmm. uh, that's not that's not a that's not an L at all. I don't plus, think plus spot nose. Forget Plus, it. Knows, forget it. Yeah. 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 Yo, Zane. So, talk to me about your puzzle stuff, your and your sunset stuff. Tell me, tell me where you're going. Things that you want to share. Okay. So, Derek Stack. So, Appreciate Derek Stack. With with sunset in there, it's pretty light because I only had one clutch um, last year. So that was a sunset head hypo to an orange dream pastel leopard puzzle head hypo. And I got one female orange dream hypo double head 
and then uh, a female orange dream leopard triple hat and a female pastel leopard triple hat that I'm keeping. Sweet. Yep. Yep. Um, and we've already kind of talked about like, or well, you mentioned, you know, shed testing. Shout out to the sponsor, by the way, RGI. Um, but how much of that have you implemented so far and, and taken advantage of when it comes to figuring out pos hats and shit like that? Are you all over that kind of stuff? Like, do you take that serious? Yeah. I mean, it's like you still, I think you still kind of do have to take it like a little bit with a grain of salt. So, mm. like, you always say, like, when you're selling an animal that it was through a shed test. Right. But, I'm doing it to basically all my pos heads and because I feel like you know you could it could really like move you quicker right and I would say even move not only yourself but even snakes to customers you know like uh, it changes everything if it goes from pos head to 100% head right you would say yeah but yeah. How, how go ahead the I, days of the days of trying to sell a pos head on the market are over yeah I see people start, still trying yeah. and I'm wondering even on high end shit you I'm can't even what the hell what the hell they're thinking the way i look at it a pos hat is like a bonus for buying a snake like if it doesn't have it period like it's just because you know like if you try to price it like thinking it's like more towards 100 percent, it's still not proven like you don't know it you know so yeah but sim simply put an investment animal you can't sell it with a pos head tag just just shed test it bro yeah like yeah. i don't understand uh, three, a uh, two thousand, you know, a thousand dollar animal, two thousand dollar animal, four thousand dollar animal. I'm seeing all that online, still with a pos head tag on it. I'm like, bro, bro, I have stuff I haven't posted on Morph Market yet because I haven't tested it. I'm not gonna do that. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, 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 I'm waiting to send these these tests out, and then I'll post it. I mean, I, I, I just don't. I'm not gonna do that. And it's like, even with, if it doesn't prove, like it, it wasn't going to sell at the pos head price anyways. So you lower the price down and Absolutely. then you actually move yeah. it. Because then I have buddies that tell me, oh, they probably don't want to test it because just in case it doesn't test. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean. But what if it does? It, what if it does? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I just think it just test it, bro. I think it's laziness, to be honest. Yeah. It is more work, though. I have stuff I have to send out, but but you. Have oh, it to is. It is because it's more data. It's more like because you know you obviously want to file that information because it's going to be important when it comes to which I'm sure email files all of it for you. But either way, it's more work. And I, I no offense to anyone here or anyone listening, but dude, ball python people are lazy. There's a lot of fucking lazy goddamn ball python people who like don't want to elevate and like evolve because it's more work. But at the end of the day, you have to. It's it's what it's all about. You know, you we're here to do more. And, and create more um so i think that's just about just the new generation is kind of being more on top of doing everything that's available versus motherfuckers who want to do less people who don't even send invoices you know what i'm saying so i don't know um what do you do to stay organized though like are you somebody who like uh like first and foremost what do you feel like is important keeping track of zane like do you are you somebody who jots down locks and right or do you lock down uh drop down ovulations like let's like, tell us what you like to document when it comes to breeding. Uh, ovulations, locks. Uh, I don't, I mean, like, I probably, I'm getting to the point where I probably should start keeping track of a lot more. Just right. getting more. So it's like, I don't know how many clutches I had two years ago. But it's like, I know where the snakes came from, you know. And it's like, I give everything IDs. So everything, like, I can trace back who the parents were and whatnot. But... I mean, have you ever had a customer ask for like all that information? Like literally ask for pictures. I mean, I, I mean, I'm sure you have, but I'm just wanting to hear like how you respond to that. And you just go and give them photos or what do you do at that point? Yeah, I'll just give them photos. It's like, it's not that big of a deal. You know, it's like, if they don't buy it, it's like you wasted 20 seconds. Like it can get annoying if you have like a lot, but like, I only get like a couple inquiries a week, you know? Right. Whatever information that I have access to, if they ask for it, I'll send it, you know? So you're very kind to tire kickers, is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, I am. There you go. You got to be. That's how you go. I mean, listen, yeah, you never you, know. You never know if they are or if they aren't. So it's like. I'm going to tell, tell you guys this. Lately, there hasn't been any tire kickers. Morph Market's been on fire lately. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I wish I had stuff to sell right now, but I don't. But And then that buy now option is incredible. I love it. 
Now that buy a now option has to it has to be free shipping, right? The shipping has to be included in that or no? Oh, or, or flat flat rate shipping. Flat rate. You okay. have to set it up and bro, I've sold like three animals like that and it's like the best. You know, order accepted, payment in the books. Thank you very much. Are you open to receive? Blah blah blah. Everything is set. It's amazing. Do you um like, do you have a certain time of year where you don't like to ship at all because of the weather? Like, you know, I, I know you're in Maryland, right? But some people fucking ship all year round. Uh, I'm just curious how you like to look at that. Yeah, so it, it does get pretty cold over here. Um, I don't necessarily have, like, no ship times. Like, oh, if Ship Your Reptile says don't ship, I won't. But um, normally it's, like, if I have something where it's too cold and I need to send it out, like, I'll just keep checking the weather every week until mm -hmm. I find like a time that's appropriate on both sides. And then I'll talk with the customer and see if we can get it out. And I, I'm fine to hold it. Like if I need to hold it for a couple of months, like it's not a big deal. Yeah. Um, I'm curious, like one of the things I feel like that could be a pain in the ass dealing with almost any kind of customer is like, like for instance, especially if it's the time of year right now where it's a little chilly still, right? I, I'm so if you want me to send you a snake, it's going to the hub station and that's, that's it. I'm not sending it to your house. And most of the time it's not a problem, but I cannot tell you how much it aggravates me when the motherfucker who knows that the snake's going to be at the hub station will be at work for fucking 14 hours or whatever. And be like, yeah, yeah, I know it's there. Go fucking get it, dude. What are you doing? Uh, but I always feel like that's like, dude, don't ever, like, I understand FedEx they're, they, they do their best, but don't ever leave a snake just sitting at the hub station. That's like the, and honestly that like voids any kind of live guarantee. I feel like if you are, purposely just staying at work or do whatever you want to do because you didn't schedule your shit right and you leave that in fedex's hands no you, you're not sure where they're gonna have this snake temperature wise you just there's no guaranteed you know what i'm saying but man that's like like okay one of my biggest like i had a good experience with the auctions i did too um but one of them was like in the middle of new york city doesn't have a car um it's fucking freezing balls over there and he's like i'm not going to the hub station i'm like well He's like, the hub station's two miles away. I'm like, well, I guess in New York City, two miles away is a fucking, I guess. But still, I can't, can't fucking walk, but I don't know the situation. So sometimes you just don't know what you're dealing with. But I feel like you got to be very clear, you know, when it comes to, like, shipping snakes. If the weather's not good, they ha it has to go to the hub station. You know what I'm saying? And customers mm -hmm. need to realize that and understand that. But you'd be surprised how many customers, like, don't want to go to the hub station, you know? Um, I, push, I push everyone. 95%. 95% of my shipments go to hub. I mean, my too. Yeah, I mean, like I, some people have a good, you know, and shout, shout out to you, but if someone has, have it in like that with their FedEx driver or whatever, like they get head, like they'll get calls like, hey, I got your snake. And they'll, like, there's some people who know they get it soon. And even then it's like, I don't even know, man, just go get it. But mind you, like, it's just something you just don't want to play with. And I, I, and I know shout to ship your reptiles, um, shout to any shipping company out there who does it right. But shipping a snake is stressful, period. Um, I, I hate it, um, especially when we're talking like chondros, like stuff that could just go from being I – mean, even a ball python is like vulnerable from going from established to something happened during shipping and it doesn't want to do nothing with anything, right? Um, and I'm curious, now that I brought that up, whenever you got a new snake in the mail, right, what, what, is, what is Zane's 101? Like what do you like to do? What's your protocol? Um, let's say you found a snake on Morph Market you really wanted and you buy it. What do you do? Um, I do quarantine. I have a quarantine rack that's in a different room from my snake room. And uh, normally what I'll do, I'll get the snake out. I'll put it in like a tub of water and like let it sit there for a little while to see if there's anything like on the snake. Right. And for that, I use, uh, I preventamite the tub the day before. And then I'll put the snake, I'll get it substrate ready, give it water. And then I'll put the snake in there and I'll leave it there for two months. How many times have you dealt with mites? Like, like you know, even back in the day when you were young, like buying stuff, kind of just like, hey, I'm just young. Like, have you ever gotten a snake with mites before? Never. I've been pretty lucky. Never? That's awesome. So that means you're only buying from legit mofos is what you're telling me. I mean, like, definitely at the beginning I wasn't. Like, I was just going to shows and I would, like, see this and I'd be like, okay, I want it. But okay. like, once I started breeding my own stuff, then, yeah, it was, like, only from – the best, you know. Those fuckers never dealt with mites. I can't believe it. Neither have you, huh, huh Emilio? I don't think you ever have. I Damn. A, I had a homie that I, I saw him at his place. 
I mean, I freaked out. He said I, I turned into a cat. <laughs> you know, Wait, you know how Say that again? I, I went to a homie's place that has a bunch of different species. And, and he had mites? He, yeah, and he's not. He's <laughs> he, I don't know. He's got some issues. And, uh, <laughs> bro, he says I turned into a cat. Like, you know how the cat freaks out? Yeah, like... It you know, like, yeah, it, yeah. You know, that, he says, my God, you ran out of my house. Yeah, I would, too. I'd, I'd probably leave my clothes there. Like, here, take them. I don't want these fucking... Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. out. Yeah. Damn. Um, and you know what's crazy, bro? Like, you could even... It's funny how... I mean, it's not funny, because motherfuckers should take care of their shit. But you could be as clean as a whistle, and then you go over to somebody's house and have no idea that their shit... Their mites are fucking jumping on your shirt, and you have no idea. And then you go home, and, you know... I'm going to go play with my snakes. I just saw my friend's <laughs> collection and it wasn't that great. And I know my snakes better. And then these little mites are, that's why it's like, it ha can happen that easy. And I fucking hate mites, man. I, oh my God. I, and, and, and mind you, I only dealt with them because I went ape shit with, with buying imports. I was getting into different species and just getting stuff literally fresh off the boat. Like I was dealing with an importer who didn't establish shit. Like as soon as it came out of the box, he put it in a deli cup and would sell it, you know? Um, and I, man, I could just know how mites could ruin, like, not only your day, but your whole week, like just <laughs> might suck. And I, you know, thank God it's been so long since I dealt with them, but I never, ever, I, I, I feel like that's, you want to talk about an easy way to transfer shit. Like, let's say one snake has one thing that's bad and it gets mites. Well, guess what? Soon those fucking mites on that snake and on another snake, whatever that snake has now that snake has, so, you know, it's, it's that easy, you know? And there, that's why there's just some sloppy motherfuckers out there who just don't take care of it. Like, it's sad, but people who aren't really on social media a lot, who keep animals and aren't really, like, about it, dude, their husbandry out there, man, it's, pff, man, it's, it's pretty grimy. It's nasty. Um, but that's I why. Go ahead. Zane, any other species uh, that you want to work with in the future that you have now? That you have, your eye, you have your eye on? Zane, I'm going I'm to let hold on. Zane, you're shaking your head. No, before the man even finishes, I need you. I, who set you up for this? Why are you saying no so quickly? You cannot. You you've been doing great this entire podcast, by the way, and you cannot ruin it by saying you only want to keep all pythons. That really hurts everything inside me right now. Why do you want to only keep all pythons? It's nothing to do with the species of like any other species. Like I actually do really like chondros. Like I would love to get them. Okay. You're, I'm, you're, you're, you're winning me back. Keep going. Yeah. I'm but it's like, I, I have like my idea with this is like more of a business than a hobby. Like it's just like fully okay, time, time out. Let's just say years down the road, you're successful in the construction business. You're actually dabbling in the real estate business and you have a sick ass house. You're kicking it. You're like, wow, look at my living room. I got space. And then will you consider maybe a condo? Are you talking about like at some point you will have a condo though? That's, I think that's what Amelia was asking you right now. Like at some point maybe, or I don't, I don't know because Son of my... bitch, Zane, you're killing me, bro. Yeah. I used to, um, <laughs> I used to be really into saltwater fish tanks. And, uh, like, cause I think they're so cool. Like they're so nice to look at, but like, like I, the older that I get, like, I know that I'm still young, but right. it's the less that you have, like the more you can do, like just <laughs> so less mature, <laughs> you know, but dude, it's usually the other way around. Like the younger you are, the more reckless you are. And you want to just, you want it all. And then you realize, okay, this isn't smart. Let me dial down. At least that's what I did. And I'm, but obviously you're a whole different fucking beast. You're, your your mentality is a lot more, you know, where it needs to be. Um, I, I gotta, I gotta. Well, I, I give you props on that. I gotta defend them for a minute. Like, I did ball pythons only for a long time, and every time I tried a different species, I sold it because <laughs> I wanted to focus fully on the ball pythons, and I wanted I mean, to master it and 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 go forward. And now, now I have five species, bro. And, you know, looking back, for me at least, saying. It was a mistake. It was what, a mistake. For, make make for, make. It was a mistake not to get into other species. No, it was a mistake to sell off. Like bro, I had, I had a pair of hogs ten years ago, and I sold them. That was a mistake. Yeah, I uh, I was for me. You know? I used to have hog noses. I used to have crested geckos. Um, never like to like anywhere near the size of ball pythons, but. So you have dabbled. Yeah. 
Okay. And you're just like, you know what? I'm going to stick to what is business smart at this point, and that's the ball pythons. Mm -hmm. You're not fucking around, bro. It looks like you're just trying to stack some chips. <laughs> A you're like real estate license, construction business, and ball pythons. That's it. Um, but listen, at the end of the day, when you have less, it's more because you're – mind is focused on what it needs to be focused on and when you do get that itch of adding other stuff guess what your mind floats that other stuff and then you lose concentration and i and it, it looks like you're not messing with your concentration at all right now so I, again here we are we have another young hitter on the show teaching us a thing <laughs> like you should dial down and be focused if you want to be good at something right um so i mean listen i I think I was just so expecting you to say, yeah, I want Emerald Tree Bow as uh, I'm, I, I think I'm about to, like, because I'm sure you, if you wanted to, you could buy a Conjure right now if you really wanted to, right? Uh, and I thought I could easily pursue you, but it wasn't as easy as I thought I was going to be. So day by day, though, maybe on the next round on Trap Talk, I'll probably come at you a little more aggressive because you'll be probably, be, you'll be more older, you'll be more successful, and just be ready. Right now, I'm going to go light on you, Zane. Okay. Next time we talk, bro, if I don't see a Focus Cube habitat behind you, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, That's funny. But okay, serious question here. Um, obviously, you're you're young, but you've been around where you've seen some sort of a dip in the ball python market before, right? But here we are. The, we're, we're in the, the dip of a lifetime right now, um, which isn't still anything crazy. But because of COVID, the way things spiked up, now we're feeling the drop on it. How are you dealing with the price drops? Um, and even if you kind of take us back to your mindset, towards the end of last year because i feel like tinley in october is when i started seeing blackhead stuff drastically drop and clown pie stuff was super like a lot less and i was like holy shit so you being young and invested in a lot of this stuff and looking at this like a strictly business how do you take market drops when you the way it just recently happened in the last year i mean it's like i just see it as like that's the new price now you know like you, you do still have to sell stuff. And I think like when the market was really good, like I really didn't have the stuff to sell, you know? So even as the market's gone down, like the amount that I've, I'm making is going up. Like the, like probably these last couple months is like the first time that I've had an actual like downturn. But up until then, like I was still just like doing just fine. And I don't think like for the long term that it'll really affect me much because the, the stuff like, the stuff that I'll be making this year, next year, like DG Clown Pies, DG Azantic Clowns, DG G Stripe Clowns, like that type of stuff. Like, I don't see that going down enough to where it would hurt me like anytime soon, you know? How much are you focusing on market pricing right now on DG Clown Pied stuff? Like, is that something you check regularly because you want to, you know, start pumping those out soon? Or do you not even kind of look in that stuff until you make them first? Like, how, when are, like, I'm just curious, how much are you looking into that? I mean, I, I look at that stuff to see if there's anything that I can buy, mm -hmm. but it's like not really um, like I'm not really worried about the price because I, I can't sell it now anyways. I don't have it. But right. uh, this year I should have a shot at DG Clown Pods that are hypo. Whoa. What? Damn. Quads. What I could add to that is that you could hypothesize some numbers for the future. But, Doesn't help. Yeah. but you know, at, go there. That's smart. At, at the end of the day, it, you know, once you hit the animals is when you're going to know the truth, you know? Yeah, because so, unless you have them in front of you, yeah. what, what's like, the like point? Like right now, yeah, right, we're going to hit some animals this summer. Bro, we can't, with the way yeah, things are right now, yeah. we can't even really come up with a real price for four months from now. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's true. I mean, and also it's kind of, it's just false excitement. It's kind of like, yeah. why even get that in your head? when the reality of that is not going to be it, especially, a, you know, like you said, even a, even the summer, a few months from now, like, and, and mind you, it could be better, but it could also be a lot worse or it could just so, be right where it needs to be at, you know? So for me, any customer that's on a waiting list, I tell them, look, this summer we'll price the animal. Mm -hmm. I, I don't give them a price right now. I don't think it's fair to the customer. You know? You wait list? You do wait list for ball pythons? Oh, yeah, I have a waiting list. That's tight. You got a wait list thing? Mm -mm. that's sick hmm how do you advertise that e how do you like you just like people know like they're hitting you up like when you when you have exams that's people. mainly repeat people or people okay. looking for specifics that makes sense you know like for zane i'd be on a waiting list for for more cypress sunset stuff mm -hmm. 
you know. Whoa, Cypress Sunset. Okay, so what Cypress Sunset you have going this year? I actually don't have any. No Sunset stuff going no. this year? No, I don't have any Cypress Sunset stuff. I have some. Yeah, where that where that come from, me? Well, I mean, no, because I bought the, the Cypress Head Sunset from him. Oh, so that's right. Okay. Right. So but I, I, br I brought that up. You know, I, I'd be on a waiting list for some hypo puzzle stuff. Mm. You know? I should have some uh, some Enchi Leopard hypo puzzle stuff. Cool, cool. Now, let's think about the odds being in your favor, which I hope they are. But let's say you hit a lot of shit here. Like, let's say you, a lot of the stuff that you are looking to hit visually, you end up hitting. How much of it do you really want to hold back? Like, what is, what is important to you to hold back at this point? Um, it's really just like, like how I see it is like, if I have stuff that I'm trying to sell and then it gets to like four five, six, seven hundred 700 grams and it doesn't sell, like I'll just keep it. So that ends up being like a, a like a, a couple of my holdbacks every year. But the, the stuff that I'm like, I never even list. It's like only like the best snakes from every clutch, you know? Right. But let me ask you this. Like if someone you know knows that you have something that level of a holdback, is it still for sale if the money's right? Like if the dollar's right? Like like will you still like all right? I'm gonna drop let this go if if you if you throw me the right number, right? So yep. in a sense, in a sense, everything's for sale. Everything has a price, yeah. Damn, I like it. That's, this guy's good. I like this guy. The hey, that's how you make money, bro. Especially if you could if you could hit it the following year. I mean, especially I mean, if it's enough for you to just okay. Get that money and do something even crazier with it. Oh like yeah, that, yeah. That's, you know? that's another. That's another way to look at it. It's the beauty yeah. of this. I mean, and that shit happens too. Like, man, you. That's why it's important to have ways of staying tapped in with people, either if it's your customers, social media. But dude, you gotta let people know the energy of your collection and your projects because you never know if someone's out there who needs something that bad, where they're willing to drop a huge bag with you and say, "Fuck it, I'll take that snake and." take this money and you're like well, all right i'm about to make the shit again next year because the way i look at it like man i had a i made a i made i made a hold back well for sure i mean it was a hold back it was a mardi gras uh clown combo that i made last year and i was gonna hold that back and the homie ended up picking up for it but like it was it wasn't peanuts like he paid good money for that and i'm like well fuck i'm looking to make super gravel or not the same snakes this coming year again so that's why i love the ball pythons man I can always, i'll make it again <laughs> i don't give a fuck sure I'll the money does have to be right for it to make sense. Oh, for sure. Because at the end of the day, I mean, I really wanted that snake. I didn't want that snake to go. Like, that, mm -hmm. that was a female, too. So it could have done some fucking damage for my super gravel stuff that I have going for the future. Um, but also, like, you know, again, like, money talks, dude. And and yep. and if you want it that bad, and fuck it, let's do it. And uh, But it also feels good when it's to, like, a, a good friend of yours or, like, somebody who, like, has always supported you and you supported them. So... Um, another reason why I love this game, you know, you just have people who like, you know, you take care of them, they take care of you and it just, uh, it just continues to go like back and forth, you know? And I feel like the more you could build that for yourself, the better you are. Cause you're never really going to be in a place where, Oh, I can't sell anything. No, man. If you are that guy where people want to come back and spend money with you, you're always going to have that flow. It's like a endless pipeline. Like the real estate game. Like what, what gets you fucking going to the real estate game is when you sell if you take care of so many clients and they tell other people and they tell other people, they tell other people. And next, you know, you're selling to their entire family and like, it's just same shit, bro. You just got to take care of people. Mm -hmm. But no it's, I mean, it's so easy to take care of people in the ball Python game. That's why I love the ball Python game. Um, sorry. Go ahead. E. Yo, yo Zane, have you seen uh, the tricked animals in, in puzzle like trick puzzle? What's uh, tricked? I'm confused. You mean hurricane? Yeah. Yeah. I'm being a dick right now. I know you are. I hate that name, bro. Can we stick call it Hurricane, bro? Okay, Hurricane Trick. I haven't seen it. All right, bro. You gotta check out the pastel trick hurricane that, that one of the homies hit in Jacksonville. And the trick puzzle, bro. It's right now it's my favorite puzzle pattern combo. Really? Yeah. That's uh, a big call. Hands down. This shit's dope. You gotta check it out. Yeah, I like the um the stranger puzzle stuff. Oh, okay, I, I haven't seen that. Who's made that? I think it was um, Balthazar. Is that how you say it? Ooh. I want to say, I think he had it on Morph Market for a little while. It was a pastel stranger puzzle. Bell, what? Can you spell that for me? I think it's B-A-L-T-H-O-Z-A-R. I might be spelling it wrong. 
But Balthazar, Bal Bal Balthazar, am I saying yeah. that right? Yeah, Who is... I've talked to him a little bit. Oh shit, he has some cool shit. Um, okay, I'm sorry. Continue. I'm just, I'm just. That's all I had to say. Just that it was neat. Wow, I haven't seen that puzzle stranger, huh? I'm gonna have to check that out later. Now, one of the things I want to talk to you about Zane tonight is like, man, I can't help how so many people just. Don't even conversate, you know, because, you know, I, I do kind of clown on how many fucking ball python podcasts are out there, but not even them really focus too much on incomplete dominance, like, and don't even, like, zero, zero in on how important it is to having the right incomplete dominance at play with whatever project that you have going on. Um, so what are those incomplete dominance that are really important to you and, and maybe the foundations for your future projects? I think like pretty much everything I have has OD in it somewhere, you know. Um, Is that because you're, you know, the native to Maryland, the the, the uh, Ozzy Boyd's? So you, you're just paying homage to him, or what? <laughs> yeah, I bought a lot of stuff from him to start, you know. I mean, OD, I mean, look, I mean, but come on, let's be real. That line is ridiculous. It's yeah. especially when you put it back into each other and just never stops. Man, it just keeps getting cleaner and cleaner. Um, so I'm mad at you on that, man. OD is. Odie's OD. Odie's top, man. Uh, can we? Oh, man, I don't know. Is Odie king? Like, is can we say Odie's like king it's right one now? Of my favorite. King one of the kings, I think. You can't go wrong. You know. Yeah. It's like a. It's just such a solid foundation to anything you have going on in the future with recessives. Because mm -hmm. if you look at it now, look what it does. It's just. It's almost like. It's like a pastel, but not because pastel gets hated on. Nobody hates on Odie. I don't see anyone hating on Odie. Right. Yeah, I don't see. Wash anything out. And, and the super is insane. Yeah. Like the difference between the normal and the super, like when you have other stuff in there, like pie. Right. All that high intensity shit that, that you end up getting at some point. Mm -hmm. Money. I love it. I, I can tell you, me and Zane both love the OD hypo puzzle. Mm -hmm. uh, the one that, that uh, Justin got from um, from uh, Barry. Barry that Swoop? Is, yeah, that thing is phenomenal. When I saw that Barry snake... Swoop. I bought two puzzles <laughs> that day, bro, <laughs> bro. That snake is incredible. You know, yeah, the good one. It's yeah, yeah. There's one with Enchi too. I don't remember. I don't know if he posted it, but yeah. also crazy. Might have been Dale, right? Maybe. Yeah. I'm not trying to be mean here, but let's be honest. If we were to rank some certain morphs in the game. What ranks higher, Hypo or DG? In your world, Zane. In your world. Hmm. Um. See, I think like the the DG gets you a look that you can't really get anywhere else. Um. But like the DG sunset, like I'm not that big on. Um. Like I think it is better in basically everything, but Hypo is too. But I think I'd say DG. But it's close. It's it's close for me. So you would, even though you're not a big Sunset DG person, you would still rather you rather have Sunset DG than Sunset Hypo. No, for Sunset, I'd rather have Hypo in there. But like in in the general scheme of things, I think DG wins it for me. Did you see the adult DG Sunset? Yeah, there's an adult Miguel. Yeah. Yeah, his adult, adult, adult is fucking dope. Yeah. Is it? It's actually getting yeah. nicer with age. Yeah. yeah, I haven't seen it since it was like maybe. Uh, I'm gonna tell you this. I actually want to make it now. Really? Yeah. Were you iffy on it when it first came out? Yeah. Oh yeah, when it came out, I was like, okay, move on. Okay, I'll have to look at it. Does yeah. he have? You haven't seen it? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna pull it up. So you haven't seen it at all? No, not not as an adult. Let's pull it up. Oh, here it is. And actually, he posted a picture on his IG stories um, a bit. This isn't really current, current, uh, but I'll say this is one of the better pictures he posted of it. But that's it right there. And I will say it looks better than that right now. Um, yeah. He posted a picture of him breeding, of it breeding to one of his females, and it looks better than it does in this picture. And I will say right now, DG, DG's aging Sunset a lot better than Sunset Solo. That's a fact. So... It yeah. is it's serving justice, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, because the, the sunset does brown out, you know, like not not that much, but it, it does like lose a lot of its color. Right. But th that snake with like orange stream, yellow belly, 
Like, that would be pretty insane, I bet. But let's be real. Sunsets by themselves, as adults, look like shit. I mean, they, they, I think they have a really cool pattern. Well, I, how can you see it, though? What pattern are you looking at? Can you show me? My, I have a, uh, a sunset hypo that may... Uh, have- uh, 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 hold on. It's he- What? Hypo. Now, people know out there, if it's legit he- hypo, that snake's going to look amplified. It's going to look that, a lot better than it does. Yeah, so, that, yeah, that one copy of hypo helps a lot. Yeah, so unfortunately, that that's not valid. Because that doesn't count. Valid. Yeah, I need. No, but but you know what? Again, I'm with Zane. I have so many different uh, genes and traits in my collection that I'll tell you this, man. I can still value the the pattern and color palette of even a regular sunset. Ah, it, get know, out of here, man. cap. And and sunsets <laughs> as are insane. They're really cool. Say it again. Like, wait, sunsets as babies are insane. Like, I know, mean, or pastel clowns. Like, that's not fair. You can't say, like, oh, babies are amazing. <laughs> Look at killer clowns, bro. Killer clowns are the best <laughs> ever when they're first born. And then give them two sheds and bye bye. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but also, like I said, everything has everything. Say what you want. No one, no one is in the game of sunsets to, to, just to make plain sunsets. Okay. Yeah. So, if, that's why, like, if anyone takes what I'm saying too serious, you're fucking, you're kind of out no. there because no one's no one's really just here to say my end goal is to just to make a sunset. No, it's not. I'm, I'm gonna defend MJ 100. percent I'm with him. I'm with him 100. percent I'm here to make beautiful adults. Yeah. Not only babies, beautiful adults. Yes. The, the, so the I, I fully agree with MJ. Yes. I'm. I'm. A, a, a single gene sunset is not what I'm. It's just the start. Mm-hmm. you know yeah and there's so much to come with sunset i already know like it's you see that you already see it now like you know whenever you see cypress and shit going on and man dude you want to talk about my favorite even though no one asked me but my favorite incomplete dominant right now is cypress holy and you can't even super that or can you can you super cypress no you can't right you should that's like that's like a that's, you shouldn't right that's like a, that's like a spot nose a spot nose thing you don't do that right <laughs> <laughs> but can you do super wookie yeah right yeah are um, they cypress and wookie they're leadic are they i don't think they are no you can put them together right cypress wookie right or no if it's like chocolate they're leadic what do you mean it's like cho- okay school me again guys real quick i get confused so correct me chocolate- wrong, but- so if something's a leadic you can, and putting them together makes no difference, is what you're saying, or re- remind me how that works. Like, it's you like, go, ahead, Zane, go ahead, Zane, tell me. It's like an act like super, but I mean, I guess like with like spider and like blackhead, like that's kind of a weird one. Okay. That like messes it up. But- so, and just to be clear, if this is true, like for instance, Will, shout out to Will. Bro, you know you're a hitter if you got Will Morris in the chat. Shout out to Will Morris. But He's saying Cypress Wookie is very likely a Lelix. So if that's the case, you want to avoid putting them together, correct? If that's the case. See, I don't I don't know. Cause if if like Cypress, I think because Cypress is a Lelic with like this mm. spider blackhead stuff, isn't it? Or is it not? Am I, I don't know. Um, as this is this is my my weakness. All because I, I tend to tune this shit out because it's so annoying and it's so like. I get like fuck. Here we go. Another thing not to do, right? But I always it's, it's, it's very important. You got to know this shit. So I'm, yeah, I'm I always to refresh that stuff too, bro. Don't feel bad. You know. So, yeah, let's 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 fucking let's let's refresh it then. So at the end of the day, if something's a leak, you don't want to put it into each other, right? You leave that alone, right? Like yellow belly inspector or leak, and they so make a super. They, they act the same, is what you're saying. Yeah, well, they make like a super snake. Snake. yeah. So if you put Spectre to Spectre, you make an all-white snake? No, you make a Super Stripe, but the Spectre Yellow Belly is also a Super Stripe. What if you put a Spectre to a Gravel? You make highways? Mm. Something like it. They call it some Pavements, right, or something? No? Yeah. Pavements? I thought pavement was asphalt to gravel. Again, I, I get confused with all the Yellow Belly Complex stuff because I don't work a lot of it. But well, we shouldn't leave this confused. We got to fucking figure this out right now. Like This is the coolest reptile podcast in the world, not the confused... So we got to fucking make sure we 
kind of like unless we legit don't know but emilio this is why you're here like you're supposed to help me out on this one so like, <laughs> just, i'm just kidding yeah, no but I, I don't work with a lot of uh, the yellow belly complex stuff i just have specter yellow belly and and a little bit of gravel that's it i just understand that there are a lot of things that if you don't pay attention to it could really fucking throw you in the loop you know what i'm saying um like one of the things I knew right off the bat with ball pythons was like the whole spider with wobble. And you heard so many stories about the debt, like the, the, the desert gene having to be deserted because of what it does. So that stuff right there, I'm always alert for, but when it comes to like a Lelic and, Oh, that's the same as that. And maybe not everyone knows that. And they're spending all this money on something that's a Lelic. And it's like, dude, you know, I don't know. But then again, it's like, that's on you to do your fucking homework. Just be careful out there guys. What are you going to do? <laughs> Over the last couple of years, like I think that's gotten way more complicated, you know, because yeah. you have like, you have like the cryptic clown stuff that turned out a Lelic. I still don't understand the Krypton and cryptic shit either. I I think I've asked more than a handful of times what is what, and I still forget. And I I have actually tuned out that gene. Like I like I saw that you have it going on. I think right, you do right. Don't you have some Krypton something like? Oh so, yeah. I was I I, I pass. Sorry. I, I and I, I'm it's only because I don't want to be overwhelmedly confused with other shit it's just it's so deep bro and maybe i may maybe maybe i'm not cut out I'm, for you. I'm, I'm with you i don't have any of those animals in my collection i'm just not into it and uh you know much love to everyone out there that loves them they're just not for me yeah but listen but but also like you know for people who just want to know all the opportunities and what's available if you try to sit there and think about that in the ball python game you're gonna fucking be burnt out because there's like, I don't want to say you don't need to work with it all, but man, try to watch what happens. It's too much. It's overwhelming. I think you just kind of have to narrow it down and and build from there and just, you know, and find out as people talk on shows and, and whatnot and hear what's being said and what to avoid and what not to avoid and just got to do your homework. That's what I'm saying. It's, Ball Pythons isn't just about dumping money into it, raising it up, and then you breed. Like, you got to figure out even what to pair, what not to pair. It's 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 chess, not checkers. And this is why not everyone is successful at this shit, bro. People like people are out there probably punching the air right now, listening to a twenty year old telling telling uh, us how successful he is and has a fucking real estate license. And these people are still living in the basement of their moms in like mid thirties. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just telling you, <laughs> um, uh, you just you just got to put it together, you know. And and that's why me and Emilio give you so much props because for you to be this young and you got this shit. I mean, you got this shit down, bro. And even though you have a lot to to grow, still you have a lot to, and who knows what the future has in store. Um, but man, it's exciting to see like where your head's at already at your age. You just, it's just, I don't want to say you don't see it a lot because I told Emilio, like, bro, there's something about reptiles and young kids where the young kids don't act like their age. Like they're if they take it serious at a young age, their maturity just spikes to where like they're almost like an old man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and that's not a disrespect to you, bro. I mean, I'm just saying you got, you got, got a Benjamin Button thing going on and, and it's working in your favor. Like I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> See, right. it, that's just like a business thing. Yeah. Like, you're like young and you, you like attack anything with a business mindset. It's going to come off that way, you know? Yeah. Right. And, and again, look at everything you've done and your collections, you know, it's pretty small, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, 18 clutches. I, I'm surprised. I thought from the outside looking in when I didn't know you, I thought it was a lot more, mm -hmm. honestly, you know? Why? Well, and, and I'm just curious, I mean, it's just based off the stuff he was posting or what made you think he had a lot more? When, like, when, I, when I assessed his morph market and whatnot and the reviews and I don't know, okay. it, just looked, it just looked bigger to me. That's all. Yeah. You know, it, it looked like a bigger operation. Mm -hmm. it, well, I, I feel what it is with Zane is he's doing everything right, right off the bat. Like he's not wasting any years or because a lot of people just, and, and mind you, they don't know how serious they want to take it until after they have a few years under their belt. But something told you from the get go that you want to, you'd want to take this very serious. Um, And here you are, you know, you said 12 years, 13 years old is when you started looking at breeding, right? At, at, and, and now we are like just shy of 10 years later and Dude, it's good to see it, man. And, and, and like I said, you have so much more to grow. It's ridiculous. Like, appreciate it. Yeah. It's, it's Yo, does it get annoying when people have you 
I don't know. I, I don't know if this the is young the, thing. The young thing is a the, young the, thing. The ageism. Have you gone through any ageism? Well, it's like a majority of my business is online. Yeah. You know, okay. You don't get judged on any shows. People like, don't even know him. <laughs> like, like as far as his age, like they don't know who he is. <laughs> yeah, and that's kind of how. Like, I've Hard. met with people. Like, I mean, I, I probably have met up with fifty people, like in person, to sell them a snake. You know, and they're like, they never say anything, but they seem surprised most of the time. Right. But like, I don't think it like really harms you in any way because if you deliver the product and like you're nice to people, it's like. <laughs> They're getting the same thing, you know. I got a friend who's been in the game like since he was a kid, like 13, 14. And he told me like he did the same thing. Like I think kingsnake.com and all those forums he was on, and nobody knew that he was a fucking kid. And he actually got he bought a croc monitor off King Snake. Okay. And, and and it got sent to his house. And he ended up like, and it was like a full-on croc monitor. And I'm like, holy shit. Like, and when he told me that story, I just couldn't believe it. But it's crazy how like you carry yourself like a real adult and it's online. Who's going to know, you know what I mean? Um, but like kudos to you because there's just so many room for error when you're young. Like you could just do some stuff. That's like, why the hell would you do that? Well, cause you're young, but it's like, that's not an excuse for you, man. And it's awesome. Like you're not letting being young stop you from being next level in a grown ass fucking game. Like even though people don't act grown sometimes, I'm just saying like, we're in a, this is a grown ass game. You're hanging out with some grown ass men in this and women in the ball python game, and you're doing great. Thank you. So, but hey, don't fuck it up. You're still young. So, <laughs> yeah, still okay. can. I don't think I know, but but I don't see it happening, bro. I don't. Hey, let me ask you. You got a chick? You got a girl? No. Good. Right. Stay away from that shit. You're good right now. <laughs> that that will fuck it all up. I'll tell you right now, bro. Do you? That will all come. Just stay stay tunnel vision, bro, and just focus on everything that Zane needs to do, bro. Because Chicks will ruin it. I'm sorry. Just keeping it real. My dad told me Partners. that. It was so true. Partners gotta like the snakes. Yeah, but he's not, 20 years old. What do you? What partner does he need right now, bro? Like, well, I mean, is, I'm just saying. This isn't the 90s. You know? you know what I mean? Like, it's not about getting married right out of high school. Not at all. That those days are gone. Like, you got to fucking do you tr and entrepreneurship type shit first. You know, then you get do it all that later. I feel like. But anyway, I, I didn't say marriage or anything, bro. I didn't say no, that. no, no, no. I'm not saying you said yeah. it. I'm just saying. But typically, I mean. Dude, I got homies just like you. I, you're my homie that got married right out of high school, like and started the family. My best friend Caesar has three kids that are like all in high school already, and I'm like, and we're the same age. I could not imagine a kid in high school right now. That's mine. I, I feel like I'm still in high school. Like it doesn't. I'm. You know <laughs> what I mean? It's just crazy. But it's just it's just crazy how the world works. And um, but also like the reason why I love the reptile game is because the people, but like the youth, man. It's all about the youth. You are the future, all right? And it's very – that's why I'm also so excited to hear someone so young have such a good head on his shoulders because the future's in good hands for the reptile game with people like you. And other young guys your age need to fucking look at you as an example because I'm sure they don't want to be always living with their mom or, you know, having to rely on other people. Relying on people suck. Like, people out there want – they want their own shit, but it's not always easy to get. The reptile game can get you there. This is a good example. You, you play your cards right doesn't matter what your age is you can fucking make it in the reptile game so um it takes time though it does yeah. patience and and, and you got you got to be grounded right like you can't fuck off like you have to really be dialed in and, and and like how you said how you had too many males and no females and you had it like dude well then you have to do something about it you don't just sit on your ass and let them just grow up and then you're like fuck like you got to flip them and you know and i hate to use that word flip but it is what it is you got to get them out and get something in that you need um and it takes work. Like, you just can't be lazy. You know what I'm saying? Um, laziness, especially in the beginning with ball pythons, it just doesn't work. You, you got to – and find a way to stay excited too, you know, because it's easy for people to buy all this stuff, and then they get bored. They don't even want to post because it's like, oh, it's the same snake. Well, so what? Keep posting. Like, you got to keep posting. Like, you should never stop posting, especially if uh, you spend yeah. money on it, right? That doesn't make sense. Any, any plans to get your social media impact going a little bit more? Not, not right now. Um, like, <laughs> see, I, I don't really, I don't really know what, what my plans with that are because at the moment, like, as far as like a business goes, like I'm able to sell out every year and like, I just post the stuff that I make and I like, and then hopefully like people will see that like from my morph market and then know that I'm legit is kind of like my thought with it now, but it like, 
like even if I wanted to sell more stuff, like I couldn't, you know. Let me, ask you, let me ask you this, Zane. If you get to the point where you are selling stuff, and and let's say the projects are in your favor and you're making relevant stuff where this money is good money, is there any kind of amount you can make off snakes where it makes you want to do just snakes and not even worry about nothing else? Like, is that ever a possibility? Yeah, like I'm like getting to to the point now where I could do just snakes. Like, it wouldn't like I don't think it's smart, and especially as like because I still do have time to do other things. Mm -hmm. but um there probably is a number i'm not really sure what it is <laughs> but uh you know hopefully we can get closer to it you know oh well, yeah because if you were gonna do this 100 percent, you would need to check off every box i mean yeah, you big would box, need big that. Box too. just because yeah. you're so just because you're so young and anything could happen right but still like i mean that's mm -hmm. why you're not you're not you're not relying and that's another wise thing of you even though you see the potential already in your ball python projects that you could just be like fuck i don't need to do nothing i could just do this but you don't want to like you're like i got energy to do other stuff right now and that's smart to do man you're young you're a young bull you know you got stuff that you you're capable of doing so go out there and do it because the more you do this now the quicker you can chill at some point in your age and you can just put your feet up and just breed snakes and just just mm -hmm. like, kind of kick it, you know what I'm saying? But that's why you take care of this stuff now at a young at an age. Like your boy Emilio already joined the fire department at 20. Like, dude, some yeah. people don't do that until they're 30. You know, they wait, yeah, they Zane, wait 10 years. Zane, you have one thousand percent the right mindset. Like, I can tell you, my son's already telling me, Oh, I'm gonna have three or four days off. I'm gonna go do something else. <laughs> <I'm> like, okay. <laughs> I mean, and but you know what? Most most firefighters do that. Um most yeah. really successful people are always hustling. Yep, they don't um, stop. You have to. Yeah, and what? And but it's so hard to do. Like, okay, think about people who do something every day that they hate. Do you know how draining that is? Like, there's people who spend hours doing something that they truly hate. So by the time they get home, they don't want to do nothing but just eat, sleep, and go to bed, or they don't want to do nothing. Like they're burnt out. Like they don't even have a passion to do something they really love because how much. They hate their day-to-day -day life, and that is what you want to avoid, bro. Um, but sometimes you can't. Like Sometimes you've got to have a job that makes you feel like shit to make you understand you don't need to be doing this. Like you got to fucking do something about it. Um, but you know, everyone's, everyone's story in this world is different. Everyone has a different type of timeline, chapters, and you don't need to look at anyone as like, oh, that's going to be me. No, bro, you're creating your own fucking story, and that's what's great. Like I said, it's impressive. Young kid. And I hate calling you a kid because you don't act like it, but that's what you are, bro. You're still a fucking kid, and you're making shit happen. Um, um, so refreshing, awesome. I love it. You know, um, you know. Instead of a kid, I call you a killer. Killer, yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, I got a wrap up question for you, okay? And then Emilio has a wrap up question for you. And then we got some hot seat questions. All right. Um, but do you have a bunch of friends? Like, do you kick with all, or are you just kind of like? ground are you like just all like the rest of this reptile geeks are just all about our snakes like how big is your your group of friends out there uh i have a few like maybe like six or seven and any of them do what you do no okay so, so like basically like how my day is is like i go to work and then i work out i do the snakes and then i hang out with friends so let's say i'm one of, let's say i'm one of those group of homies right even though i am right we're friends but i'm just saying let's just say like i'm like one of your local homies and I'm in that group of close friends of yours. And I'm like, yo, what's up with the snakes? I've been watching you for a little bit. You know, I got, I got a little bit of coin from saving money from a job. I'm, how can I get in? What would you tell me? Like, what would be your advice to anyone who has just been watching you from the outside? And they're like, well, what do I do if I wanted to get into ball Python? What would you tell me? See, like not, none of my friends have like shown any interest in it at all. Right. So I'm going to pretend to be that friend right now to do that. So here we are. Okay, like, I think, like, the, the first thing that I would say is, like, to... Run away? Don't do it? <laughs> yeah. Like, unless they, like, actually, like, really wanted to, like, if they were, like, ready to stick it out, I would say no, because it's, like, it like if you don't have money to start, like, it takes so long, you know? If you have other plans, it's, like... It, like I, I was lucky because I started so early that like I was in like I was in middle school and then I was in high right. school. Like there was like I could hang out with my friends, but like apart from that, like there wasn't 
that much else to do, you know, where it's like now, like after when you're in college and like once you're done, it's like you can do whatever you want, you know? Yeah. So overall, like you would you, you would advise me not to spend money in the ball Python game right now, then. Unless you were, unless you were like really ready to go, if you're ready to go, I would, I would say go for it, you know. Right, but then that's like okay, but go for it. How? Like, isn't that kind of like a broad thing to say to somebody when, like, what would you direct them? Would you tell them to go to the ballpythonworld.com or, or like, when there's so many different things to look at, right? Where would you direct someone to go at this point with social media being social media? Like, what, what would be the direction? Um, obviously like if you want to sell stuff, social media helps a lot. I would say start off with good equipment, get like what, whatever prod, like look into what you like, recessive stuff mainly because that's where the money is. And then buy maybe whatever you're planning to spend, you know, it could, it could be different, but like somewhere like five to eight females and then let them get a little bit bigger and then buy your males. And would then you, would you send them to YouTube. Hmm? Would you send them to YouTube? Yeah, I would send them to the, the Marcus Jane breeding thing. If like that was like, because it lays it all out, you know, like right. every step, you know. And if you could understand that, then you're in the right place then, right? Of course. And then obviously, like if, if they have any questions, they could ask me, you know. Respect. All right, Big E, what you got for them? All right, man. So where do you see yourself in the next five years when it comes to your collection size? And your overall impact on the community, you know, um, the industry, and also, is there a specific combo that you could, you know, tell us that you want to hit in the next five years? That's not a secret. Uh, the combo, Super Orange Dream Hypo Sunset Puzzle, I think is the one. Uh, yeah, I mean, what else? That's probably like the main one that comes to mind. Cause like, as far as I know, like there's nothing else that's really close, like anyone else that's close to making that or closer than I am at least. Um, there might be, I don't know. There's a lot of people who don't post that sort of thing. Um, I think collection size, I like the, the 30 to 50 clutch mark, I think. Um, I mean, if, if it becomes my full-time thing, which I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards no right now. Like, obviously, it could get bigger. But I think, like, my ideal, like, collection would be, like, 50 clutches a year at, like, whatever, 20, 30,000 average price, you know? Which, obviously, like, that's, kind of, that's, like, way easier said than done. That takes a long time. Like, you need to really... Yeah, so, 50 clutches, what do you mean 20, 30,000? Like, that's how much you'll make off 50 clutches? That like not how much I'll make, but how much I want the average clutch to be worth. Oh, got it. Okay, yeah, that's boss right there. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, okay, let's see. You accomplish that. Those should be numbers where you're like, I think I could just do snakes now, right? Is what you're saying? Well, like I don't. What's the math on that? Well, I'm just kidding because now I'm excited. I like, I like, I like money. So I'm just saying. So if we were to do fifty times twenty five thousand. What is that? Like, obviously, like, of course, that's enough money to do, like, whatever you want, you know? But it, it should million. I don't Wait. know what I'm going to be like at that time, you know? I don't know what I'm going to be into. 12.5. That's a good place to be. <laughs> I'm cool <laughs> with 12.5 million. <laughs> Is it? I think no, so. I, I, might, I see. Unless I put it in wrong. Yeah. 25,000 times 50. Is that wrong? 50 clutches? Yeah. This is why I don't do math and I should never do math on a live ever again. Hey, bro, what a great podcast. I love that we ended this shit talking about money because I love money. Um, but, dude, great episode. I want to say this hour and 40 minutes went by super quick, but we have hot seat questions now. Are you ready for the hot seat questions? Yeah, let's do it. All right, guys, do me a favor. Get the likes up for the homie Zane. This was a great podcast. He deserves all the likes he could Thanks, possibly get. So hot seat questions. Zane, I don't know if you've seen these before, but the quicker the better, okay? That's how these work. You've done a player job so far, but to really ace this podcast, you got to nail these hot seat questions. Okay. You ready? You ready? Yeah. All right. Guys, hot seat questions coming in hot. Here we go. Frozen thought or live? Live. A cut or no cut? No cut. 
Respect. Red Chondro Neo or Yellow Chondro Neo? Red. Ball Python wise, pre first shed meal or post first shed meal? Post. If it was up to you to make this law, would you say yay imports or boo imports? Yay. To spray or miss the ball python or to never spray or miss the ball python? Spray or missed. Respect. Yay sports or boo sports? What is that? Yay sports or boo sports? Okay. Favorite sport? Soccer. Nice. Soccer? Really? Damn. This okay. Guy's different. All right. I mean, that's respect. Uh, are, are we talking? Uh, okay. Who's your favorite club team? Arsenal. Arsenal. Damn. Respect. You get down on FIFA on the sticks on the. I on the... Like, I used to play so much as a kid, and then I was like, like a couple years ago, I was like, I'm never buying this again. Like I waste all my time. I used to, I, for whatever reason, I would. Well, I used to do Manchester, but Arsenal was like my always go to whenever I played on mm -hmm. FIFA. Um. But anyways, big flexor or no flexor? No. We're, we're going to see about that, all right? Um, just steak or fish? Uh, steak. Favorite cut of steak? Um, what's it called? Why am I blanking? Respect. You're young. I don't expect you to know every cut of steak. Um, filet mignon. We're talking uh, T-ball. Oh, okay, all right. All right, good choice. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you like listening to music while cleaning snakes or no music? Music or podcasts. Okay, favorite music. Like, what's your favorite genre of music out there? I don't really listen to genres. It's more the songs. Okay, what's a favorite song out there right now you're rocking with? Hmm, favorite song. I would say, okay, back to genre, right? Soft rock or hip hop? Let's see hip hop. Favorite song or artist? Artist. Kanye. Nice. I like that, man. I mean, even though he's kind of gone off the rails a little bit, yeah. I'm still an easy fan forever, man. Uh, all right. Little word association. Say the first thing to come to mind. You ready? Yeah. Milk. Cow. Cocoa. Husk. Stuck shed. Bread. Instagram trolls. Lame. FedEx shipping. Nice. Least favorite ball python recessive. Uh, this is bad. <laughs> What's he gonna say? One. Oh, for sure there's one. Why am I blank? Hot take monsoon. Whoa, dude, that was smoking. <sighs> dude, I wasn't ready for that at all. I don't even know Emilio. Emilio is flustered. He is flustered. You got him. Okay. Number one incomplete dominant in the ball python game right now. Mm, orange dream. Respect. Last but not least, before Emilio, coolest reptile podcast in the world. This one. Let's go. Get him, All right. Two separate ones got to go. This one's going to hurt. Okay. One's got to go. DG Exanthic Clown or OD Hypo Puzzle? OD Hypo Puzzle. I agree. But <laughs> damn, it's close. Yeah. I love both. Damn it. I agree. Right, the next one. One's got to go. Pastel DG Puzzle or OD DG Clown Pie? Uh, OD DG Clown Pie. I was going to say that. I was going to say that. You just can't fuck with me. I, don't, I like pie, but when it comes to looking at full markings, you can't fuck with that. You got to see the, you know what I mean? I don't know. Hey, Zane, what a show, buddy. I will say you killed it on so many levels. We just had shy of 100 people tapped in for you tonight. All right. So what do you have to say to all the love and support you've uh, been getting out there in the reptile game, man? Uh, I appreciate it. I appreciate all my customers. I like the ones that come back. <laughs> pretty good. Um, yeah. Thanks for having me on. This is fun. For people out there to be on top of everything, uh, ZDC reptiles um, on ZDC underscore reptiles on IG. That's the best way, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And Morph, and, that, and Morph Market. Okay. I'll make sure I put the Morph Market link in the description below, but you could definitely right now catch Zane's IG uh, link in the description below. So go click on it. Go give him a follow and be ready. The future's bright for this guy. That's a fact. You'll see him back here on Trap Talk and it won't be on a Monday night. I'll tell you that much. Uh, but guys, give it up. It's a wrap for Zane. ZDC Reptiles, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. All right, dog. Uh, keep killing it. All right, we'll see you next time.
All right, yep. homie. Peace. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> that was great. Incredible what someone can do when they put their mind on it, on, on something, bro. 19 years old. Uh, anyone out there, bro, you got no excuses. I mean, I, want, I definitely want to give props to his parents or like whatever, who, whatever mentorship he had going on, which I'm sure it was his parents growing up. Kudos to them. Um, and just it's inspiring to me. Like, you know, like I, I don't know what Leonardo wants to be when he grows up, but I definitely want to make sure he's on the right path to whatever he wants to do. He can do it. Um, but, dude, kid's sharp. Kid's fucking hella sharp. So, but like like I said, this isn't the first time I met youth like this in the reptile game that is just on another level. Like Stephen Cush. I met Stephen Cush when he was 17, bro. And, oh, my God. Like, I'll never forget. I'm like, how are you 17, you know? Um, but it's the beauty about the reptile world. I love it. And I and I guarantee we, we have another young person on here at some point who's going to just blow us away. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. And, hey, props to you, buddy. This was all you. This was me and Milo have, like, this little back and forth thing where – he picks a guest, I pick a guest, and he killed it. And he, and he always kills it. But this this one right here was a good one. I appreciate that, E. Thank you, um, bro. Oh. Yeah, and guys, don't be shy. Listen, if you want to come to this segment and you think, listen, I got some shit I want to talk about, reach out to either me or Emilio on, on IG. I will say probably reach out to Emilio. Um, and we and can just, talk about it. And yeah, we could talk about it because we are looking for some talent. We are definitely looking for those people out there who are just ready to fucking and, – and you don't even you don't even need clutches on your belt. Just – Give us some sort of passion and excitement about what you're doing, and we're, we, we'll talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Um, but, yeah, Emilio, great show. What do you have to say to all the love and support we had? Just, just shy of 100 people tonight, so what do you have to say to all the love and support Thank we got? Thank you, guys, and, uh, you know, we're doing our best to to bring you um, amazing, you know, breeders, you know, on, on new, breeder, new Breeder on the Block and uh, the Trap Reptile Network, you know, pushing it, you know, taking it to the next level. New Breeder on the Block, number one most influential segment in the reptile podcasting game right now it's crazy i mean that's 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 what the best times to say in the magazine it's not and, then, and then what seven days a week oh yeah I but mean, yo what did i call you this morning through text i don't know you call me a lot of things sometimes <laughs> what is that <laughs> what did you call me what is that the podcast king oh man yeah <laughs> day by day bro. Uh, Let's hey, go. listen, I appreciate you guys. Do me a favor. Villarino Reptiles on Instagram. Go tap into the V Unit family on IG. Go subscribe. And thank you so much for everything you do, Emilio. We'll catch you next week. Give it up for the homie. Big E Top Keith Rap, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Later, dog. Peace. Thank you so much. Uh, it's a wrap this Monday night. New Breed on the Block. The homie Zane did great. This was awesome. Shout out to all the sponsors tonight. You can catch all the sponsors. Link in the description below. Also, go give Zane ZDC Reptiles a follow. Uh, like I said, yeah, what an amazing episode. I appreciate you. Tomorrow, All in the Tree Tuesdays. If you are in the reptile game and you've heard this name before, you're going to be stoked. And that name is Ron St. Pierre. Yeah, this guy's he's a G. Straight up OG in the game. And he's coming to All in the Tree segment here tomorrow, 6 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. So please, please set your reminder. All right? And also hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell. You'll be reminded for sure. And I cannot wait. Looking forward to speaking to Ron. He keeps Emerald Tree Boas and Green Tree Pythons outside successfully. All right? Cannot wait to tap in. This is going to be something I'm going to geek out over for sure. And you should be ready too. And then also Thursday night, guys. It's been a while. So I said, why not? So I'm going solo dolo this Thursday night. Oh, yeah. I got a lot to talk about too. So set your reminder for this Thursday night. MJ is just going solo going to be talking about why i'm why i started a network okay I, I do have a lot of people asking me what my what my motive is create uh turning trap talk rental podcast into a network and we're going to talk about it and i'm going to talk about a bunch of other stuff too i feel like i have not vented and spoken to you guys one-on-one -on -one in a very very long time and it's going down this thursday night so cannot wait to catch up with all you guys personally one-on-one -on -one like this and it's going to go down and don't forget also wednesday steven cush's cush's corner brandon wheeler coming to trap talk network under Stephen Cush's podcast. So be ready. It's going to be great. And again, shout out to Zane. I love the youth, man. The youth in this game is so bright. The future is so bright for the youth in this game. It's ridiculous. And uh, yeah, shout out to ZDC Reptiles. It's a wrap. Episode 468 in the books. Have a good night. I'll see you tomorrow night and I'm out. Cheers.